Hmm. What up? Ha <laughs> What's up, big man? Man, you always in the bed sleeping. Stop all that sleeping, man. You got time for be sleeping. What's what is up with him, y'all? Every time you turn around, he knocked out, sleepy, sleep, sleep, sleeping. I'm like, I'm like, man, I ain't got time to go to sleep. Maybe that's why I'm always tired. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. I'm just, I'm just chilling. I'm just chilling. So do this live, kick it with y'all for a little bit. Um, it's Got a little topic here we need to discuss. Um, I think it's an important topic. Try to I know ain't a whole bunch of people might hop on right now, but I'll be honest with you. I I did it live because I'm a little I'm a little upset and I explain why. Um and I figured if I do it live, that'll keep me that'll keep my emotions in check to some degree, you know. Um and I'll, and I'll explain everything, you know. Um, so sometimes I'll, you know, I'll do live. This, this here, this here just keep me in check and all of that kind of stuff. And y'all will help me out. And then my wife, she probably got the notification. So she'll be like, hey, what is up with you? Why is he going live? We done got on his nerves now. <laughs> and I'm just being real with y'all, okay? And when I make my quota, I take myself, I give myself five days off, okay? Okay, you made your quarter. All right, at the beginning of the month. Okay, you done for the month. Bet. <laughs> and if y'all can do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the share button, um, share it out to your favorite social media platforms. Let the folk know that we are on. Um, one of these days, I got to figure out how to do all that stuff simultaneous with Twitch. I mean, not Twitch, mm, with TikTok and all of that. Um, let me see something here. Um, let me see something here. Let me try something. I'm gonna try something different today. You know, um, oops, hit the wrong button. Hit the wrong button. All right. Yeah, I don't want that. I don't like TikTok sometimes. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's a photo. Okay. All right, party people, this your man, Griff. Hey, I'm on live right now on YouTube, 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 YouTube. So get over to YouTube and look up Griffin Notary. I'm live talking about business communications. All right, party people, this your man, Griff. Hey, I'm on live right now on YouTube, 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 YouTube. So get over to YouTube and look up Griffin. All right, so I guess it's posted now. All right. We'll see what happened. That's that was on TikTok. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, let me. Yeah, I want to. We got to talk about this here. Made my quote. Yeah. So um, here's the thing. Um, we got to figure out a better way to talk to one another. Okay. We really, 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 really do. Okay. So let me see. I'm gonna try to do a quick one on um, Instagram. Um, Instagram always kicks my butt. Oh, here it is. Story. All right, party. All right, party people. This your man Griff over here on the IG. Look, I'm right now live on YouTube. So swing on over there. YouTube.com. Look up Griffin Notary. Talking about business communications. The importance of it for it to grow your business. All right. See you in a second. Peace. All right, party. All right, party people. All right. So I'll just post that and we'll see what happens there. All right. What's going on, Akita? That's good. That's good. All right. Yeah, things are coming along great. Things are coming along great. Um, <laughs> all right. So um, a couple of years ago, I actually did a video. Um, let, me, let me pull it up. I did a video a couple of years ago 
and it's probably time to talk about it again. Um, let me share this with y'all. So a couple of years ago, I did this video right here called business to business communications. And as you have seen too many people listen to it because people don't want to know how to learn how to talk to each other. But in this video, I was talking about various different things that we are dealing with. Um, because you people coming into this business, coming into this year, and you got to learn how to talk to one another. And you also got to learn how to ask questions. So I did this video because there was some people that was, was coming at me a particular way. And I know it wasn't like, hey, we're coming at you, Griff. But they was more so trying to get me to give them information, which you know I have no problem doing. But the method and the way that they was coming across wasn't really professional. So I decided to do a video about it, okay? And really talking about how business owners, you and me, talk to one another. Now, will we always talk to each other correctly in the right way? No. But when you come across somebody initially, that first impression is key, okay? So lately this year, and even the last part, the latter part of last year, I started getting more contact, you know, people was emailing me and stuff. And lately I've been going back through and catching up on all these emails that I've been missing. So that's a fault of mine. I've been missing some emails. And a lot of times in the emails, and if y'all listen to me, y'all know I always say, I need you to at least put your phone number in there. You know, I don't even care where you're from, but just your phone number, something. So that way I can at least give you a call. Because if you follow me and you see I'm always out doing 70 signings a month, I don't have time to sit here always just to type back and communicate back and forth via email. You know, so when people ask me questions and then the type of question they're asking, trying to type it out in the email doesn't suffice. So I need to either do a video about it, which I'll see, see I do. I got over 1200 videos or I will give a personal phone call. More often than not, very few people ever give me their contact information. They very rarely, they say, hey, I saw your video. I like this. I like that. I want to talk to you, this, that, and the other. And they want me to give them my information, but they never give me theirs. And I'm like, and I've always, and I say over and over again, I can't keep saying it every time I do a video. I have to leave me your email. Give me your email. I mean, your um, phone number. So that way I can just give you a quick call because I'm always driving. I'm always in between appointments of some sort. And I can give you a quick call, talk to you, answer you a couple of your questions, so forth and so on. Maybe even direct you to a video that I've already done. But more often than not, people um, will not include their contact information. So one of the things that I said, okay, now, and then, and listen, I'm, my mind's got all these things going through. So I grew up being taught business communication through English. When, when my English class taught us how to write business letters and all of that, when I went to college, how to communicate via business letters and emails and all of that kind of stuff. And one of the things that I see more often than not is a lack of this right here. This is talking about email signature lines on your emails. A lot of people don't include anything. It's just a plain, it's just Hey, I'm Fred. Hey, I'm Ethel. And looking forward to hearing from you. And I say, okay, well, they probably haven't, they probably only seen one or two videos of mine. They don't realize how busy I am. Got that. Okay. That's no big deal. Okay. And thank you again for hitting the like button and sharing. So I, I, I take, I give people the benefit of the doubt that, okay, you don't know how busy I am. So you're looking for me to stop. Okay. Let me type this email out. And a lot of times I have multiple questions in an email from somebody and it's like, man, I can't answer all that in this email. And then sometimes it's hard for me to come up with the right words to articulate, you know, on, in writing to bring the point across. So I'm like, it'll be just best for me to just give the person a quick call. But I have no information. Why? Because they don't put a email signature line up here. So in the description of this video, there's a link to this here and you can Google you know yourself and look up different types you know like this here straightforward example your name your business name phone number website now 
even though you're just starting out and you may say, well, I don't have a business yet. I'm still interested and I'm trying to figure it out. I got that. But you should at least have something in there on your signature line. And when you're talking to another business and you're trying to get some information, to me, it's best to include some type of contact information because you can always delete it out. You can just put it in there temporarily. It doesn't have to be a like mine. Every time I create an email, it gets put in there. Boom. But you can just add it in there manually for that one particular time. And thanks, Desmond. But you need to include that because that helps the business owner out. So now if you are a business, then when you're communicating with another business, to me, it makes sense that you say who you are in the thing, you know, not just at the top, but at the bottom. So in case they decide, hey, I'm going to reach out to you or whatever the case may be. Or in some cases, there might be that person may have a virtual assistant of some sort that is, you know, keeping track of that. And you just send in this email and you have and they don't know anything about what you're talking about. You know, um, oh, I keep forgetting to turn my music off. My bad, y'all. They know they don't know anything about what's going on. All they know is that there's this email for the boss. Now, I don't have a virtual system, but it's just this email and there's no contact information. Now, here's something that a lot of people don't realize. Some business owners, even if they're not, even if they don't have a virtual assistant or a physical assistant, their business practice could be if you send me an email with no contact information, I don't respond. And I don't want you and I'm and I don't want to ever adopt that that maybe now if I get really, really busy, but I doubt that. But the thing is, when you're reaching out for information, you want somebody, whether it's to try to mentor you or connect or whatever, you should always include some type of contact information in this communication that you're doing. Most people don't. They don't include nothing. Sometimes I've seen it. They don't even say who they are. They just say, I've seen you on YouTube and I want to get into the notary business. I, can you help me out? This, that, and the other. And it's like, okay, who are you? I don't know anything. And now it's like, okay, so now I got to respond back. And okay, so that's that makes it hard. Now, <laughs> the other side of the business communication is the actual communicating. What I've seen and have seen for, for from day one, a lot of people, and feel free to ask, ask any questions about this topic or anything else, um, is that they don't know, people don't know how to ask questions. They know how to make statements. They know how to say things, but they don't really know how to ask questions. And there's a certain way that questions need to be asked when you're communicating with somebody. Um, and what I did was I found this and I remember this from when I was. Oh, that's the wind blowing a little younger here. Um, this is called the seven. What are the seven C's of effective communication? And the seven C's are clear concise, concrete, correct, coherent, complete, courteous. Now, I've gotten communications from time to time from people that didn't have none of that in it. Didn't have any of that in it whatsoever. It was just like, boom. And today I receive a communication from somebody where and I'm explain to you why it threw me off. OK, so there's a video that I had out there talking about um, about what Virginia notary should or shouldn't do something about um, the collecting closing funds as well as collecting or, or notarizing the note. So I'm looking through and I always look at the comments um, and I see this comment that said, how do we get paid? So. I don't remember everything that I say in a lot of my videos. Sometimes right after I do the video, I completely do a data dump and don't remember. So fortunately, the video was only 10 minutes long. 10 minutes, I said, okay, let me look, listen to it real quick while I'm 
going to my um, house inspection. And I listen to the video and I'm like, okay, yeah, I remember this, I remember that. And it starts coming back to me. So as I listen to videos, I'm like, oh yeah, I said this, that, and that. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't recall talking about anything <coughs> dealing with payment or whatever. So I'm not sure what's the angle or where they're coming from or what it is that they want to know. I'm not, I just, it just didn't, wasn't sure. It wasn't clear as it, as it says, it wasn't clear. So I replied back and said, hey, I listened to the video, but I don't basically, I'm not getting what, 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 what are you talking about? So I wanted them to explain why they, you know, what do they mean by how do we get paid? Because how do we get paid can mean a variety of things. And from my standpoint, as well as maybe others who do this, the, the YouTube stuff and helping notaries out there, are you could be talking about the, the groundworks that I do for the house inspections. You could be talking about a pot steel. You could be talking about general notary work. You could be talking about the loan closing. There's so many different aspects of what we are doing in this business. So when you say how we get paid, I don't know what you're talking about because I don't know what you've seen prior to, especially when the question you're asking, in my opinion, doesn't relate to the video that you asked it on. So that makes it unclear. So what should a person do? Well, I will go and at, look at the video if I can. If it's too long, if the video is like an hour, 30 minutes and I don't have time, then I'm going to ask them, hey, can you share with me what point of the video that you was talking about so that I can prop basically I can answer the question. So what are you talking about? And most people respond back, OK, when you was talking about this at the 15 minute mark or the 30 minute mark or two hour mark or 16 day mark of your video, I'm like, all right, cool. I go back. I listen. Oh, OK, I get it. This is what I mean. Well, in this case, and it completely threw me off for a second, and that's what got me a little upset <coughs> was that after asking the question, the person came back. Um, I don't, oh, I was trying to figure out where my phone was at. The person came back with a statement saying, no need to get snippy. And I'm like, huh? I'm sitting here like, your question wasn't clear. Was it concise? It was short to the point? Yeah. Not concrete, because I don't know what you're talking about. Wasn't coherent to me. And then your response back wasn't courteous. <laughs> so I'm sitting here like, I'm like, I'm trying to figure something out here. And for those who just sliding in here, this is what I'm talking about. You know, um, the seven C's of effective communication. So you, so I see a question that says how we get paid. Okay. How we get paid. Okay. Most people say, how do we get paid? Okay. How we get paid. I don't know how we get paid because I don't know what kind of pay are you talking about or what area. So that's not clear. Okay. To me, that was concise. You know, I was like, okay. But there was no, there was nothing to help me understand what you meant. So then when you ask, I asked, I'm like, okay, what are you talking about? What basically expound it's no need to get snippy. How do we get paid for our services? And I was like, okay. Now, I don't know if this person is just a random person coming through, really is looking at, you you know, being a notary or just somebody stopping by and just happen to ask a question. Um, <laughs> you making 16 videos a day, <laughs> you know, um, but. One of the things that I've learned is that it's very important for me, and I'm sharing this with y'all, because as you move in business and people look for information from you and they want your help. You have to be careful how you answer people who ask questions, especially when they're not clear, because if you ask, if you answer a question just off its face, there's a chance that you could answer it wrong because you don't really know the person's true intent. Not that they're being malicious, but you don't know what is it encompassing. So how do we get paid? How we get paid? OK, saying it the way, how we get paid. And seeing that I got, especially if you're talking to a person that got multiple vehicles that they are working to bring in money, it could be anything. And then when it's not attached to a video that's talking about getting paid, where you're at with this, you need clarification. Clarity helps. 
So then they said, I knew it there. So I'm like, okay, if you're new to me, that's not how you come at a person who took the time out, who took the time out to answer your question as far as that was a sign. That was signature closer, closers. Um, you know, it's like I need some more clarity. Okay, I need some help with this. So when you you don't do that, okay, that's really the bottom line. You don't do that. You don't come at somebody like that. Okay, if somebody t- takes the time, I say, hey, look, basically clear it. And then it's like you're getting snippy with me. And this is why a lot of YouTubers don't like answering people's questions. When they put them in the comments, because when you do answer a question, somebody will be like, well, you didn't you ask him you being snippy or you just didn't answer my question. I asked how we get paid. You should know what I mean by that. So why didn't you answer it? And that's really what it boiled down to. A question was asked how we get paid. You didn't answer it. You asked me a question about what I asked you. What the heck else am I talking about? I don't know you like that to assume that you, that I understand who you are and what you're talking about. And this is why business communication is key. Now, the other side of the house, that person or any other person will say, well, you know, that was just you because see, here's the thing. How would you talk to a title company? And people like that, and I was that way at one point, will say this. Well, I wouldn't talk like that to a title company. So then why would you disrespect me? Why would you disrespect this other person that you're trying to get help from by talking to them like that? But then you're going to show respect to these other people. That doesn't make sense. And people coming into this business, I want you to understand that people that there are a lot of folk in here. You can say I'm one of they have they're very sensitive and there's which I'm not. But I just know that from experience. Five years and it's been over five years. There are people, you talk like that to, to them, they're going to shut you down and they ain't going to have nothing to do with you at all. You talk and, and if you're quick to get snippy with somebody because you're saying I'm getting snippy, they'll be like, well, you're getting snippy. Okay, we're not dealing with you. And you can mess up things for no reason at all when somebody asks for clarity. So it's very important that you understand and you take time out to think about how you communicate to somebody, how you reach out to somebody, provide them with information so they can reach back out to you. Now, whether they do it or not, that's a different story. That's truly a different story. However, when I reach out to people, I make sure that I put in and feel, like I said, ask you any questions or comments and stuff um, about this topic or any other topic, but I'm trying, you know, I make sure that I ask questions and I'm concise and I try to do the best I can to follow those seven C's of communications, of effective communication. I do everything I can to, you know, to, to follow this here because I recognize the person I'm reaching out to. They got a schedule, they got a life and they're busy. So I want them to get I want to get to the point and I don't flood them with too much. So sometimes it'll be. I'll just deal with, I may have four things, but I'm going to just deal with one or two. <laughs> Boom. Or I might have four things, but number one and number four are really sort of related. So I'm going to put them together. I try to find a way to communicate that. But when I ask questions, if I do comment on somebody's YouTube channel or anything else, I do the best I can <clears throat> to articulate myself. So that they'll know right off the bat what I'm talking about. That's one of the things that I do. I try to make sure that I'm concise. I'm clear. This is what I'm talking about. I don't try to give a whole bunch of unnecessary backstory. You know, in some of these short communications, but it's very, very important that you figure this out, because if you don't and you're trying to come into any business, you could ruin your opportunities to move forward. So how you communicate to people. And if you communicate to the wrong person, I'm not the guy that's going to sit here and tell somebody don't talk to them because they talk to me back. No, that's between you and them. But it's very important. Now, give me y'all thoughts on this. I like to hear what y'all got to say about this. Have y'all had struggles with communicating with people or do you have, you know, are you currently having struggles? Are you trying to figure out 
the best way to communicate with people. Maybe that's why you don't go to networking events. Maybe that's why you don't ask questions. But if you're going to ask questions again, just be respectful. And if somebody asks for clarification on what you're saying, I always assume that they don't really know what I'm talking about, even though I'm it may be they may, but I don't I don't assume. So if somebody asks me for clarification, I will um hold on, let me see. This might be a client, it might be a spam call. Griffin Norton, how can I help you? All right, spam call. Got to take these phone calls just in case it's some business. But that's the thing. So what are your thoughts? I mean, do y'all have struggles with business communication? And I'll be honest, when I first, I'm 56 now, but years ago, yeah, I had some deep struggles. And when I got married, my wife did a great job in helping me out. And then I um, read things and listened to things and I've gotten better at it. But I want y'all to be successful. And I'm telling you, when you're coming into a business environment, especially if you've never done that before, you got to sometimes take a step back and think about the environment that you're going into and asking questions. And no matter how down to earth a person may seem, they may not always off the back understand where you're coming from. It's probably a good idea. Like to me, and this is just my opinion, if I'm reaching out to a person for help and I want to know something in this case, how we get paid, I would have simply said, I'm a new notary and I'm trying to understand how do we, how do we go about getting paid in, you know, for our services that we provide. <clears throat> now from there, I could go back and I could come back and say, you know, with for general notary work, you will get paid directly from the person that you met. If you um, are doing loan closings, it would normally, depending if it's the title company, you could give them an invoice, just that and the other. So I would have explained that, but I did not know, so, you know, because it's just a random person saying how we get paid. And I have no idea what you're talking about or what it's in reference to. And that's what's key here um, that we have to do. And that's, again, what I had to learn in my business life. And once I started learning that, then I was able to move forward into having better relationships and having people be more confident in me because I was able to properly communicate to them. And especially when I started coming across people older than me, been in business longer than me, they had a different educational level than me. I had to figure out how to communicate to them so that my lack of communication wouldn't be a, a, a distraction to them or a turnoff. Okay when to say something, when not to say something. Sometimes it's just don't say anything. It's just, <coughs> you know what I'm saying? And just figure these things out. And, and nowadays there's so much, so much out here on the internet that we can go and research and man, we can figure some things out. We can find out um, this here. And you said, great. This is a great topic. Currently taking a class for, okay. All right. So have, is there anything you can share with us that you've learned so far, Akita, um, in your class? Now, I remember, I just remember my class was get to the point. That's all they always said. And I sometimes have a hard time doing that. I really do. And that's part of the reason why I like YouTube, because I can get on here, this is my channel, and I can just run up and just be all over the place and everything. But when I go into a networking meeting, I have to I'd have to, I have to make myself be concise. I have to make myself be correct, coherent, courteous, um, not get offended because I'm talking to somebody and then somebody, quote unquote, more important or more influential than me comes up to the person I'm talking to and their attention gets taken away. I don't get offended by that. I don't. I don't used to, but I don't anymore. And it's like, OK. And then sometimes that person and they and they and sometimes people will pay attention to how you act when they walk away from a conversation with you. And it's like, OK, you did that. 
your loss or I'll catch you on the flip side. <coughs> and I've had people come back and say, hey, sorry about that. So let's finish our conversation. And then I sit down and I talk to them and everything is cool, you know, and all of that. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. Um, and in the chat, in the, in the um, description, there's a link to my first video I did called Business to Business Communication. This is really to help us out because I'm telling y'all, as we move forward in this year, um, and in a little bit after I get off this video, I'm going to post some video. I'm going to post a video. I think I, I think two of them on, well, one of them, I'm going to post this one video talking about the gig economy on my community tab. I'm telling y'all, we got to get it together because the competition is about to get tight with the gig economy. Um, people, more and more people are moving into this thing. They're getting into the notary and you got all these trainers. They're coming out the woodworks trying to train all these people. Now, think about it. And this is a side note from what we are just talking about. Think about it. If you feel you <clears throat> if you feel that you were improperly trained or not fully adequately trained to do this job as a notary. And that trainer has not changed who they are and their methods. Guess what? They're going to be attracting a whole bunch more people, mistraining them. And this is why it's so important for you to get properly trained, as well as know how to properly communicate and talk to people when you're trying to get help. Because most of you are taking training from somebody. You're realizing this really ain't all of that. They're really all over the place. It's not good at all. And now you're seeking help from someone else. This is where the proper communication comes in at, because really you didn't so much commute, like try to communicate with them. You just you just heard them say, I have a course and you say, OK, I'll take your course. But now that their course is trash and you like, yeah, it is. Yeah, I ain't. now you are seeking and trying to get some real, real help. This is where the proper communication comes in at. This is where you got to think about how you want to speak to somebody and make sure you're not saying something off the wall. So that you're not offending somebody or at all, you see what I'm saying? And then getting shut down when you could probably get help. So, and I know that a lot of people are stressed and, and like, I got to make this money. I don't spend this, that, and the other. So how am I get paid this, that, and then I do this? I got that. I got that. But what I'm going to do now is share with you how you get paid in this business. You get paid if you're doing what is called general notary work, as some notaries call it, Non-mortgage related work, wills, power of attorneys, you typically will get paid from the person who you met. That lawyer or that individual or that couple who asked you to come do their will, power of attorney, IRA, you you know, go to the hospital, go to the jail, things of that nature, go into their house, their job, they will pay you directly. If you're talking about apostille, which is you doing <laughs> getting documents certified what's going on frank and yeah y'all hit the like button appreciate that if you're trying to get documents authenticated with the state the person who you who hot who communicated with you who um hired you they will pay you directly okay when it comes to the loan closings if you're working with a title company a direct title typically they will ask you to give them an invoice and you will send them an invoice and whatever method of invoicing you want to use is fine there is no standard like oh you got to use quickbooks or you got to use square or you got to use. you can get a dag on handwriting one and then walk it over to them or mail it to them as long as you have an invoice that you can track and you give it to them and then they have that for their records and all of that and if you're doing a handwritten one you may must most definitely want carbon copy and once they do their process they will send you a check if you're doing stuff with these signing companies, SnapDoc, Signature Closes, those ones that I talked about a couple of days ago, they will, they, a lot of them have an internal invoicing system because they've asked you for your W-9 um, and all that kind of stuff, your tax pa paperwork, want your business tax or your social, whatever you classify it as, and they have it internally and then therefore they will pay you and you don't have to invoice them and they will pay you at whatever interval and each company will tell you this is when we pay some pay in 30 days some pay in two weeks some pay two months so you have to find out from them 
and you communicate in a professional manner with them to find out, or better yet, you read the terms of service that outlines the business relationship between you and them, and they would say, this is when we pay. That's how you get paid. So I hope that answered the question. Okay, so if there's no other questions, bounce out. Y'all have a good day. Thank y'all for tuning in. Greatly appreciate it. Um, as always, I appreciate all that y'all do. Hitting the like button, sharing, subscribing, hitting the join button, the super things, the super chats, all of that. I really do appreciate that. But I'm here to help y'all. Just We just got to find a better way to make sure we communicate with each other properly so that we can get the help that we need and desire and then move forward in this business, making the money that we want to make. All right. Talk to y'all later. Peace.